Hello girls and boys. Welcome back to Read Me a Story and greetings from Hong Kong. I'm going to show you my book first before I read. It's called Tips and Tidbits for Parents and Teachers. I wrote this so I'm the author. But this is for your moms and dads to read and it will help them to help you at school. It tells them all about the things I learned in my 50 years in the classroom. All right, they can get it from amazonbooks.com. Today's an exciting day because it's a Pooh Bear Day today, and we're going to have a delightful story. Actually, this is a request from one of you who has been watching all my stories on Read Me a Story. And um, it's a beautiful book, and the story is... Oh, I'm going to show you the front, too, because Tigger is here, and he is moving back and forth with many, many bouncing activities that he does. I hope you can see that. He's quite the, the bouncer. Remember, we had a book about Santa like that as well. All right. Now, I'm going to also say hello to my grandchildren, Max and Theo and Josephine, Charlotte, Penelope, and Simon. And a special day as well, because this week is Simon's birthday, and he's five years old. So happy birthday to him. All right. This is the 100 Acre Wood, remember, and Pooh Bear and all his friends live in this 100 Acre Wood. And this is the map where they all live. Christopher Robin, these are all the characters. Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Owl, Roo, Kanga, Rabbit, Christopher Robin, Tigger, and Eeyore. <coughs> we had some poems last time about each of the characters that were such fun to read. But today's story <coughs> is called Pooh Goes Visiting, and it's, it's an exciting story. Not so much fun for Pooh, and you will find out why. Winnie the Pooh was walking through the forest, humming proudly to himself. He had made up a little hum as he was doing his stoutness exercises in front of the glass. Tra-la-la, tra-la-la, -la, as he stretched up high as he could. And then, tra-la-la, tra-la-la, -la, oh, help la, as he tried to reach his toes. After breakfast, he had learned it off by heart, and now he was humming it right through properly, and it went like this. Tra-la-la, 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 tra-la-la. Rum-tum, tiddle-um-tum. Tiddle-little, tiddle-little. Tiddle-little, tiddle-little. Rum-tum-tum, tiddle-um. Pooh was humming his, this hum to himself when suddenly he came to a sandy bank. And in the bank was a large hole. Aha, said Pooh. Rum-tum, tiddle-um-tum. If I know anything about anything, that hole means rabbit. And rabbit means company. And company means food. And such like. Rum-tum-tum, tiddle-um. So he bent down, he put his head into the hole, and he called out, Is anybody home? There was a sudden scuffling noise from inside the hole. And then silence. What I said was, is anybody at home? Called out Pooh very loudly. No, said a voice, and then added, you needn't shout. I heard you quite well the first time. Bother, said Pooh. Isn't there anybody here at all? Nobody. <clears throat> Pooh thought to himself, there must be somebody there because somebody must have said nobody. So he put his head back in the hole and he said, well, could you very kindly tell me where Rabbit is? He has gone to see his friend Pooh Bear, said Rabbit. But this is me, said Pooh, very much surprised. Are you sure, said Rabbit, still more surprised. Quite, quite sure, said Pooh. Oh, well then, come in. So Pooh, Pooh pushed and pushed and pushed his way through the hole, and at last he got in. You were quite right, said Rabbit, looking at him all over. 
It is you. Glad to see you. Well, who did you think it was? Well, I wasn't sure. You know how it is in the forest. One can't have anybody just coming into one's house. One has to be careful. What about a mouthful of something? <gasps> Pooh always liked a little something at 11 o'clock in the morning, and he was very glad to see Rabbit getting out the plates and the mugs. And when Rabbit said, Honey or condensed milk with you with your bread? He was so excited that he said, Both! And then, so as not to seem greedy, he added, But don't bother about the bread, please. And for a long time after that, he said nothing. <laughs> At last, humming to himself, in a rather sticky voice, Pooh got up, shook rabbits lovingly by the paw, and said that he must be going on. Must you? said Rabbit politely. Well, said Pooh, I could stay a little longer if it, if you, and he tried very hard to look in the direction of the, the larder. Now, as you know, the larder is the food pantry. As a matter of fact, said Rabbit, I was going out myself directly. Oh, well then, I'll be going on. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. If you're sure you won't have any more. Oh, is there any more? asked Pooh quickly. Rabbit took the covers off the dishes and said, No, there isn't. I thought not, said Pooh, nodding to himself. Well, goodbye. I must be going on. So he started to climb out of the hole. He pulled with his front paws and pushed with his back paws and in a little while his nose was out in the open again and then his ears and then his front paws and then his shoulders and then oh help said Pooh I, I'd, I'd better go back oh bother said Pooh I shall have to go on I, I, I can't do either said Pooh oh help and bother now by this time Rabbit wanted to go for a walk too and finding the front door full, he went out by the back door and he came round to Pooh and he looked at him. Hello, are you stuck? he asked. N no, said Pooh carelessly, just resting and thinking and humming to myself. Here, give us a paw, said Rabbit. Pooh Bear stretched out a paw and Rabbit pulled and pulled and pulled. Ow! cried Pooh. You're hurting. Well, the fact is, said Rabbit, you're stuck. It all comes, said Pooh crossly, of not having front doors big enough. It all comes, said Rabbit sternly, of eating too much. Well, well, I shall go and fetch Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin lived at the other end of the forest, and when he came back with Rabbit and saw the front half of Pooh sticking out of the hole, he said, Silly old bear, in such a loving voice that everyone felt quite hopeful again. I was just beginning to think, said Pooh, sniffing slightly, that Rabbit might never be able to use his front door again, and I should hate that, he said. So should I, said Rabbit. Of course, He'll use his front door again, said Christopher Robin. Oh, good, said Rabbit. If we, can, if we can't pull you out, Pooh, we might push you back. Rabbit scratched his whiskers thoughtfully and pointed out that when Pooh was pushed back, he was back. Y you, you mean I'd never get out, said Pooh? I mean, said Christopher Robert, Robin, uh, or said Rabbit rather, that having got so far, it seems a pity to waste it. Christopher Robin nodded. Then there's only one thing to be done, he said. We shall have to wait for you to get thin again. Oh, how long does getting thin take? asked Pooh anxiously. About a week, I should think, said Christopher Robin. But I can't stay here for a week. You can stay here all right, silly old bear. It's getting you out, which is so difficult. We'll read to you, said Rabbit cheerfully. And I say, 
You're taking up a good deal of room in my house. Uh, do you mind if I use your back legs as a towel rail? Because, I mean, there they are, doing nothing. And it would be very convenient just to hang the towels on them. A week, said Pooh gloomily. What about meals? Oh, I'm afraid no meals, said Christopher Robin, because of getting thin quicker. But we will read to you. Pooh began to sigh, and then he found he couldn't because he was so tightly stuck, and a tear rolled down his eye as he said, Then would you read me a sustaining book such as would help and comfort a wedged bear in a great tightness? So for a week, Christopher Robin read that sort of book at the north end of Pooh, and Rabbit hung his washing on the south end, and in between, Pooh felt himself getting slenderer and slenderer. Oh, then at the end of the week, Christopher Robin said, now, and he took hold of Pooh's front paws while Rabbit took hold of Christopher Robin and all Rabbit's friends and relations took hold of Rabbit and they all pulled together. And for a long time, Pooh only said, ow, and oh, and then, all of a sudden, he said, pop, just as if a cork were coming out of a bottle. And Christopher Robin and Rabbit and all Rabbit's friends and relations went head over heels backwards. And on the top of them came Winnie the Pooh, free. So, with a nod of thanks to his friends, he went on with his walk through the forest humming proudly to himself. Christopher Robin looked after him lovingly and said to himself, Silly old bear. <laughs> and that's the end. And you know, girls and boys, there's a nice spy book of Pooh where you have to find different objects. And in one of the books, we have Pooh stuck in Rabbit's house. And he, you can see the big tree. Rabbit lives inside the, the root, the trunk of the big tree. And here is Pooh, so stuck. Tigger is pulling, and Rabbit and Eeyore and Christopher Robin, all trying to get him out of the house of Rabbit. Such fun. I hope you enjoyed that, girls and boys. Come back another time for another story of Pooh's adventures in the Hundred Acre Wood. And girls and boys, don't forget to press Read More because there are so many books that I have put on now for you to listen to. Bye for now. See you again.